الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى المجتبى The next point that I would like to discuss my beloved brothers and sisters in this series we hope to soften up our hearts is ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى Doing dhikr Remembering Allah سبحانه وتعالى الإمام الحافظ بن رجب رحمة الله عليه he says فأما رقة القلوب فتنشأ عن الذكر he says softening up the heart stems off from remembering Allah سبحانه وتعالى فإن ذكر الله يوجب خشوع القلب وصلاحه ورقته ويذهب بالغفلة عنه he says remembering Allah سبحانه وتعالى brings about the خشوع of the heart and also it becoming rectified and softened. وَيَذْهَبُ بِالْغَفْلَةِ عَنْهُ And you find, my beloved brothers and sisters, that all of that which has been mentioned diminishes when an individual now becomes heedless. So the more you are in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more your heart will become soft and rectified. And this is how you will attain the khushu' that you may be looking for, whether it may be in your salah or in any other act of worship. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentions in his kitab al-Wabil al-Sayyib. And for those who don't know what this book is, this book, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a book which covers the different benefits of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Under the 16th benefit, he says, أَنَّهُ يُورِثُ حَيَاتَ الْقَلْبِ Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes an individual to have a living heart. His heart will come to life. He says, سَمِعْتُ شَيْخِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِنْ تَيْمِيَ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ He said, I heard Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, who is his teacher, يقول, الذكر للقلب مثل الماء للسمك فكيف يكون حال السمك إذا فارق الماء He says, the comparison between remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also al-dhikr is like the fish. What happens when you take out the fish out of the sea or out of the water? It no longer lives, right? And the same happens to one's heart once it becomes a void of a dhikr. Ibn Rajab al hanbali rahmatullahi alayhi He tells a little bit about the opposite as well. What happens when an individual now is not an individual who is a dhakir, someone who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, الإكثار من الكلام الذي لا حاجة إليه يوجب قساوة القلب. Excessively speaking and just chatting about that which has no benefit, it causes the heart of an individual now to harden. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi also mentions that which is similar when speaking about busying your tongue with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the benefit number 25, he says that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tongue is from the causes of your tongue becoming occupied from backbiting and namima, which means the telltale, wal kadib, or to carry tales, should I say, wal kadib, and also lying, wal fuhsh, wal batil, and obscene. Falsehood that one may utter on his tongue. So the point, my brothers and my sisters here, and I think it's extremely, extremely profound. If you are busy with something, then you are going to be occupied from the opposite. Isn't that so? Can your tongue be occupied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance while at the same time you are backbiting? That's pretty impossible, isn't it? If you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tongue and you're constantly doing astaghfirullah, 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 saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, can you at the same time now backbite and slander? No, you can't. So he says, when one does that, it busies his tongue, it occupies it from all of these different evil things that an individual might utter with his tongue. He says then, فَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَا بُدَّ له من أن يتكلم. He says the abd, the servant, he must say something. He must speak. فإن لم يتكلم بذكر الله تعالى 
وذكر أوامره تكلم بهذه المحرمات أو بعضها If he doesn't occupy his tongue with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has commanded, okay, he will fall into all of these muharramat, all of these evil things, or maybe some of them. Subhanallah. And then he says, وَلَا سَبِيلَ إِلَى السَّلَامَةِ وَلَا سَبِيلَ إِلَى السَّلَامَةِ مِنْهَا أَلْبَتَّةِ إِلَّا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Because it is impossible huh, for one to be safe from all of this except by huh, occupying his tongue with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْمُشَاهَدَةُ وَالْتَجْرِبَةُ شَاهِدًا And then he says this is something that has been witnessed and tried. Okay, it has been witnessed and tried. Subhanallah. He then goes on to also say فَمَنْ عَوَّدَ لِسَانُهُ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ صَانَ لِسَانُ عَنِ الْبَاطِلِ وَاللَّغُ Whoever now uh, occupies his tongue and makes him uh, or makes himself used to just remembering Allah Azza wa Jal constantly, okay, his tongue will be occupied and busied and protected from falsehood and false speech and so on and so forth. My beloved brothers and sisters, a question that I would like to pose is, how many of us drive? Or how many of us walk? Okay, perhaps most people will fall into these two categories, right? Okay, they might be driving, they might be walking. And when we are engaging in these two things, right, how much of time goes by without just saying anything? When in fact, we could actually be occupying our tongues with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it. How many hours a day do we drive? Right? And for how long does our tongue stay quiet for? Days might go by and we don't even say one astaghfirullah. And it would be so lovely to maybe go through the different benefits of astaghfirullah, the different benefits of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, the different benefits of sending salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll leave that to you to maybe look up inshaAllah ta'ala. So this is now my beloved brothers and sisters, number eight, from that which softens an individual's heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. To do so, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. We at the Knowledge College have managed to revolutionize the way Islamic studies is taught in the West. Alhamdulillah. You see, before the Knowledge College, you'd have to find a teacher, which is a hard enough task as it is. And if you found that teacher, you'd have to hope that he would actually finish the book that he was teaching, which again was not very likely. But now, alhamdulillah, you can study and seek knowledge from the comfort of your own home. And you're not just watching videos that have been pre-recorded, but you're actually being taught live where you can actually engage with your teachers and with your fellow students in the communities that we've built for you guys online. If you'd be interested in seeking knowledge and taking your religion to the next level, then click the link below and check it out. We've got over a thousand students that have joined us over the last year and a half, and they've hugely benefited. We hope that you would be one of the next students, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum.